Hi everybody, I'm Al Rochelle and welcome back to the PCS Journal. More great information you need to know about for you and your kids to know about. Mark Hunt joins us right now, hey, the Executive Director of the Career, Technical and Adult Education. Good yes, to see sir. you. Good to see you. Boy, adult education has changed over the years, hasn't it? Oh, it has, it has. I mean, the, the economy's changed, uh, the, the requirements of employers have changed so much over the last 10 or 15 years, so we've really had to to up our game, if you will, yeah, in terms yeah. of career preparation, and also adult education for learners of, of English. Mm -hmm. of, you know, a lot of immigrants that come in and need some English language uh, learning, and as well as GED or high school diploma. You know, one thing when the economy turns around and companies are hiring and stuff, mm -hmm. one of the things that we've been discovering, and you know this to be true, is that there are certain areas where we don't have enough people to fill those jobs. Oh. I was talking to an IT manager and he says, do you know there are 14,000 right. IT jobs available just in our seven county right. area? Right. That's, sh that's shocking. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and employers, in fact, yesterday I was at a Pinellas Economic Development Committee meeting and, and the common theme with employers were, I can't find enough employees to fill all the positions I have. So yeah. the economy is very good, but you know, if you think about it, in the school district, we graduate nearly 6,500 students every single year. Mm -hmm. And the school district is working real hard through career preparation and uh, career and college readiness to have those students ready to enter some of those entry-level jobs. So yeah. employers have a great opportunity if they connect with high schools and high school students, uh, they could have a clear pathway and a clear pipeline of entry-level employees. So in terms of, of technical stuff, what does Pinellas County offer right now that could be a path to uh, what could eventually be an, an entire career in the oh, technical my goodness. side of things? Every single one of our high schools is a comprehensive high school, which essentially means there are career training programs at every single one of our high schools. We vary the kind of program uh, from region to region so that way families can access uh, just about any career occupation in their general region of the county. Mm -hmm. But we r run the gamut from business education courses which are office uh, kinds of occupations, computer IT, computer programming, cybersecurity, yeah. all the way through engineering, robotics, uh, technical programs such as auto mechanics, welding, building and construction, health occupations, nursing. We have you know, three huge nursing programs. So just about any career path a student might be interested in, yeah. there's something offered in our county for them. Now, we also have a technical high school, which we didn't have mm -hmm. before, right, and that right. was the, the, the Dick Jacobson Technical High School. That's right. Great, great man there. Did a wonderful article in the paper lately because mm -hmm. he was just, he was such a giver. Yeah. And, and not only as a person, but, but financially right. in terms of that. So you had your first year this year, right? Yeah, this is, this is our first year. We've actually completed our first full semester. We got uh, 300 kids there, and it's a it's a great place. the the uh, The students all choose to be at Jacobson Technical High School, and they choose a technical program. And we have uh, nursing. Uh, we <laughs> also have uh, building and construction, electricity. We have veterinary sciences. We have game and simulation, which essentially is computer programming. Oh yeah, and that that is huge. Oh, it oh, is. It's a big program. So and when, when they go art. through these programs, then and they get done and they graduate, where do, where do they go from there? And what do they have in their hand that says mm -hmm. I'm ready for a job, right, or at right. least ready for an internship or something? Well, in all of our technical programs, one of the end results for our technical students is to have them achieve an industry certification. Okay. Microsoft Word. Um, uh, a plus certification for computers, so on and so forth. So these students will have an industry certification, one. Uh, we will have opportunities for them to do internships at uh, various employers related to their uh, area of study. Mm -hmm. And then for after high school, they, they can go into uh, the the workplace immediately or they can go on to post-secondary education and get further technical training. They could go to the, the uh, state college and get a degree. Sure. There's a wide variety of things. So students at uh, Jacobson Technical High School as well as all of our high schools have the opportunity to go to a four-year college, an apprenticeship, straight to work, 
uh, technical Lot, lots of college, choices, a lot of choices. Yeah, yeah. Just really and all of this coordinated with, within the community. Now, you, you've got an interesting program going on with Duke Energy in terms of mm -hmm. a summer internship program. Right. I mean, this right. is is this a paid position or not? Yes, it is. It's a paid I think by position. Law, I think by law they actually have to be, but yeah. Well, there are a lot of unpaid internships, but this summer uh, all of the internships will be paid. We've got some grant dollars available through the Pinellas Education Foundation and other uh, grantees that we will hopefully place 200 to 250 students in a paid internship for 20 hours a week, but we connect that with some industry certification training the other 20 hours a week. So the kids will hopefully by the end of the summer achieve an industry certification and have you know, uh, an, the in internship experience to help them develop their career. What's interest. interesting about this development of these internships, a lot of other countries, and Germany is often looked at as kind of a model mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they, are, they have a requirement right. that you have to have, that companies have to have internships. It's mm -hmm. not a voluntary thing, it's part of their regular education systems. So are we into that enough right now that we know how successful it can be? Um, we are just starting this summer. We've, we do internships with our students throughout the year, so we have experience with internships. We know it's extremely valuable for oh, students. Yeah. I would think so. Helps them really focus their career path, their career goals, and it helps them focus in school. Gives them some some reason to do some of the things in school that they may not feel like are important. Mm -hmm. So we do know it is very uh, rewarding and beneficial for students. Our colleagues in other districts have similar programs going, and they are very successful. Now we know that uh, getting back to so what sometimes is not a very happy subject for a lot of kids is math. I oh, forget yeah, math. Yeah. You know, with so much emphasis on STEM right now, and there has always been emphasis on, on math. Let's just you know, mm -hmm. get this right mm -hmm. out. But it's becoming more and more important that in these areas, I mean, you, you really need to get a grasp of math because you're going to use it, <laughs> and not just to figure out right. how going from point A to point B if you're traveling 50 miles an hour and car <laughs> C is traveling 35 miles right. an hour, you know, those kind of things. Yeah, you know, math and science has even gotten more important these days with the advances of technology and, and things of that nature. So what we are doing with our STEM programs is bringing those applied math and sciences down into our elementary grades mm -hmm. with our STEM academies. And we found that when, when youngsters get involved in applied mathematics and applied science at that early age, it dispels all of their fears about I can't do math or science is hard or what right. have you and, and they really really gravitate to it and do very well from there on mm -hmm. so bringing those kinds of applied uh, subjects down into the early grades is real valuable mm -hmm. for students and helps them. When, when we were going to school, of course this was a zillion years ago, uh, you didn't see as much emphasis on uh, what I call careers. It was just kind right. of like you assumed you'd go through high school right. and it was kind of assumed that everybody would go to college. Mm -hmm. uh, are we over the stereotype yet that, oh, he didn't go to college, he just went to a technical area. Have we, have we, have, have we gotten yeah. over that? Well, sadly, no. Uh, you know, there are, there are is is a lot of emphasis to go to college and college is a good thing the thing we want to emphasize with parents and students is set your career aspirations your career goals and then let's match your education path to achieve that goal mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we in you know my children were the same way <laughs> they went to college because they felt like that was the answer uh, halfway through they decided they really didn't like what they were doing and changed majors, maybe left school. I thought that was required when you were a yeah, sophomore, you yeah, changed your major. That's, yeah. that's really not part of the college experience. <laughs> I, you, I was green biology and now look at me, what, what, what happened? But, but you know, what we try and emphasize with students is decide what it is you would like to do, what interests you, and then study that and be good at that. Mm -hmm. You may change that later on, but at least when you go through school, you'll have some purpose, right. rather than doing school just because. And now, one of the things that I've heard, that, and this is, this is not necessarily negative, but some, some parents, we have these conversations that go, you know, I want my kid to decide when he's in first grade what he wants to be down yeah, the line, when yeah. in reality, a lot of us don't know. So, if someone chooses to go this technical route, and they get halfway through it, and they go, 
gosh, that's really not what I wanted to do. Are they, they have to start all over again, or are they in a position that they can go ahead and continue on with their education mm -hmm. and, and still have great high hopes for what right. they may want to do if they've changed their mind about the technical side of things? Well, the thing about the technical programs in our high schools, even at Richard O. Jacobson Technical High School, is the technical program is an area of interest. You still have to do all of the 24 credits of academics that are required for high school graduation in the state of Florida. Okay. That's standard across any school at a minimum. Uh, you can add to it advanced placement courses, higher levels of math, higher levels of science. So you could do all so of those things that make the kids attractive for college if they decide not right. to go the technical route. Absolutely. And then take the technical elective because it interests you mm -hmm. and because it's something you think you might want to do. Uh, one of the things of our technical programs is is much of a mission of the technical program to help students decide what they want to do is to help them decide what they really don't want to do. <laughs> because, you know, I, I Dishwasher. May, <laughs> I, I break right. too many dishes. I'm <laughs> I, not knocking dishwashers. we got to have those, well, okay? Well, you know, a lot of kids think it'd be great to be a veterinarian. Oh, yeah. Okay, wow, that would be wonderful. I get to work with animals and things like that. But when you find out that it's, you know, it's not glamorous in every aspect, and mm -hmm. they may decide that's really not what I want to do. And I would rather they do that in high school while it's a safe environment and they have the opportunity to choose and maybe change, yeah. rather than go through four years of college, maybe even a, a graduate degree program, become a veterinarian and then decide, that's really not that's what, not what I you want to do. So of all of the programs, that are, uh, the technical side, wh which one's the most popular? Is it computers? Computers by far has been the most popular um, because you know, kids, will gravitate to computers with the technology they have available. Mm -hmm. But some of the other real popular programs are our culinary programs. Oh, that's uh, right. Very, yeah, I mean, very that, popular. That's huge these very days. Very popular. Yeah. Uh, our automotive programs are very popular, mm -hmm. uh, as, as well as our engineering. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's a wide range of popularity. Now, programs. are there any other plans for any other technical high schools in Pinellas County, or is this going to be the first one, and, and we'll see how it goes? Well, we're, we're looking at how it goes now. Obviously, there's um, you know, thoughts of, of doing this in other areas, but we have the comprehensive high schools in all of our, our high schools, so we have those already in place. And mm -hmm. there may come an opportunity to expand that, but right now we're going to get Jacobson up and running. Uh, we just recently received a very uh, wonderful gift from the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation to help us build a new veterinary sciences building. Oh gosh! Uh, so we received. Will that be up at Tarpon too, or where? No, it's going to be right there at the Richard O. Jacobson campus in Seminole. Oh, in Seminole. Okay, and right, uh, yeah. the, for our veterinary program there, wow. it's going to be a three million dollar building, and we will incorporate not only the veterinary teachers yeah. to veterinary classrooms, but also to biology classrooms in that same building wow. so the kids can see that applied sciences in action in the veterinary sciences building. Well, it's wonderful that you have so many choices. And, and, and lastly, because you don't want this procedure to get too confusing, because it can be. Right. It's like when you buy a new house and they go, okay, here are the nine billion choices right. you have to make. Right. Tiles? What color? That kind of stuff. That's right. So do you get people that are just overwhelmed with this? And if they are, what can they do to kind of sort this out? Yeah, it, it is, it is a, a, a fallback on our system because we do have a a lot of opportunities for kids yeah. and a lot of times kids run into the, the challenge of what what do I really want, what, yeah. what do I want to do. So the best thing they can do is talk to a guidance counselor at, at their school, uh, talk to their friends, find out what, sure. what is Word working for them um, and, and think about what do I like to do. Yeah. Do that. Don't focus so much on what I'm going to be when I'm 30 years old yeah, right, necessarily, yeah, but know. what really interests me, what do I like, wow. let's settle with that, and then that'll help guide them to where well, they want to Well, you be. know, what, what a great school district that you have all these choices, people. Aren't these wonderful? Mark, thank you for stopping You're by. Welcome. and we'll, thank you for I'm sure we'll me. get an update down the line as we get more great success stories in the Jacobson I'm sure we will. School. Thank you, Mark. We'll have more PCS Journal coming up right after this.